Hey everybody, so in this video we'll be looking at another very common topic that will most likely appear in your exam and these are ray diagrams, lenses, and I threw in a little bit of light calculations in the event that those um, prop up as well so you will be prepared, right? Even though that wasn't on the broad topic list, okay? So some easy um, definitions to start off with. So a converging lens can be used to form real or virtual images, sure. With reference to the focal length of your lens, Describe the object distance required to produce each type of image. So I will show you guys this on a ray diagram, but for real images, the object needs to be located at a distance greater than the focal point of the lens. And for virtual um, images, the object needs to be located at a distance less than the focal length. And let me show you what I mean by this. So forget this question, we're going to do a more detailed version of that question very soon. But let's pretend we have a converging lens here. This is how we draw a converging lens. All right, this is the plane here. And we're going to just assume that this is our focal point. And double our focal point will be 2F. Okay. So in the first instance, let's assume that we have an image somewhere over here. Sorry, an object, right? Over here. Now to find out where uh, and to find out the magnification and stuff, we first need to draw a line going straight through the center and all the way like this. Obviously my diagram is not going to be accurate, but and the next thing that we need to do is to draw a horizontal line going through the lens like here and then connecting that horizontal line to the focal point like that and eventually these two lines will cross and you could draw your image right so notice my arrow is inverted to the object right and real images are inverted that's another property but you can see that this is how we derive our um, our image right and this is our real image right we call it our real image now let's change up the situation a little bit let me just remove sorry I'm just going to remove the object there and I'm going to put it over here instead. Now notice that here is between the focal point and the lens. So this is less than the focal distance, right? It hasn't crossed the focal distance. Now let me try to do those lines again. Let's see what happens. So again, I have to draw it going through the center. So like, that's, that's bad, okay. Like that. And then what I have to do I have to go through the center of the lens and then through the focal point. Now, if you notice, those green lines will never meet. They are going wider and wider away from each other. So that's why they cannot be real. Instead, what we have to do is extrapolate, right? So what we do, we backtrack, we put our ruler on the lines and we put some dotted lines going the other way like this and then the other way like this. And now we could see that those dotted lines cross and we could draw our image here and that will be our image and you could see that the image is in the same orientation as the object that is upright and but it is virtual okay so that's what we mean by real and virtual images right okay so that's oh and uh, i just explained why the real is inverted and the virtual is upright right okay so let's do some calculations now so we are required to calculate the magnification where a lens produces an image height of 3.6 millimeters for an object height of 2.4 millimeters and this is extremely easy right so the magnification will obviously be your image height over your object height so we have 3.6 as the image 2.4 as the um the object and we get a 1.5 times magnification very simple three marks there right okay so let's get into some more complex ones now. For the same magnification, calculate the image distance given that the object distance from the lens they're talking about is 20 centimeters. Now the first things first, we start dealing with um, millimeters here and now they want centimeters. So things have to change one time, right? So I would choose to change the millimeters to centimeters. You could choose to change the centimeters to millimeters. It does not matter. Right, so obviously one centimeter is 10 millimeters. So you could just divide by 10 or multiply by 10 depending on which one you're changing, right? But the formula that we need to know is that the image height over the object height, which is the magnification, is equal to 
calculated the image distance over the object distance. Now what this also means is that you could calculate the magnification by using the distance of the image and the object from the lens as well, right? But now we have the image height, we have the object height, we don't have the image distance, that's what we want to find, and we have the object distance. So all we have to do is make the image distance the subject of the formula here. So we put back the image height over the object height, 0 0.36 over 0 0.24. And then we have, I, I just use di as the image distance and 20, sorry, 20 as the object distance. So what I did was I moved the 20 to the other side and I got 30 centimeters in the end. Okay, very simple calculation. Again, simple making something the subject of the formula. Another thing you could have done was just use the the 1.5 instead of doing the whole 0 0.36 over 2.4 thing and you will get the same answer okay you'll be 20 multiplied by um, 1.5 and you will get 30 as well right okay another formula here calculating the focal length of the lens so this is another formula here so 1 over the image distance plus 1 over the object distance is equal to 1 over the focal length, right? So a kind of a weird formula there, but this is how we can write it in shorthand, right? So I could use V as the image distance. So 1 over V plus 1 over U is equal to 1 over F, okay? So now we can't just flip them just like that. It doesn't work like that. So the first thing that we need to do is to actually add up 1 over V plus 1 over U. And that's actually very easy using LCM, right? So 1 over 30 is the, remember 30 centimeters was the image distance and 20 centimeters was the object distance. So 1 over 30 plus 1 over 20, well, the LCM is 60 and 30 could, could go into 62 times, 20 could go into 63 times. So we will end up at 5 over 60, right? Is equal to 1 over F. And now it gets very easy. We could either we could just cancel out the 5 and the 60. So 5 could go into 60 12 times. So now we end up with 1 over 12 is equal to 1 over F. And we could flip the two of them now, invert them, right? So this leaves 12 over 1 is equal to F over 1. I know we don't write anything over 1, right? So F is simply 12 centimeters. Very simple one. You could always go back through the video again and look at this calculation, right? Okay. So now we could actually have to, we have to have to draw summary diagrams now. So using fully labeled diagrams, define the principal focus of a converging lens and a diverging lens. So this is actually very easy, right? So this is how a converging lens looks. The first thing that we need to draw is the principal axis. So this is where if this was a ray of light, it goes through the center of the um, lens and it does not deviate at all. Right, this works for both converging and diverging, right? So this is like the plane, right? If a ray of light was in striking the middle of this lens, it will go straight through without diverging or converging, right? And then we draw some more um, rays of light coming here and they will all converge at a point. Now you just need to draw this, right? There's no, um, there's no distance to, to draw anything specific distance, right? You can make up your own F here, right? You just need to make sure and show that all of these rays have their arrows and all of them are converging to a single point F. And you need to label it the principal focus and you need to label the axis through the middle the principal axis. And the diverging lens is just a little bit different, but nothing too hard, right? So in a diverging lens, as the name suggests, all of the rays of light go away when it hits the lens instead of converge or come together. So again, you have your principal focus and your principal, sorry, your principal axis, which if you go through, straight through the lens, it does not deviate at all. And then you draw your four other rays and then you need to show and go in the middle of the, um, of the lens here first, straight through, and then draw that they are going away. All of them are going away. But you would realize that they do not convert so you can't get a a focal point right so what you have to do again just like the first example where i was showing you the virtual image you have to extrapolate which means you put your ruler on this straight line here and you put dotted lines going all the way back you put your ruler on this straight line here dotted lines going all the way back you do the same for these two rays 
and they will all come together at this point here f and that is your principal focus of a diverging lens so these are two very important diagrams that you need to learn okay all right so some more easy calculations here an object of height 7.2 centimeters is placed 18 centimeters from a converging lens what exactly does that mean is that let, let me draw it out for you for you right a converging lens this is the plane here so f over here and they told me that the focal length is 12 centimeters so from the, the focal point to the lens is 12 centimeters and the object is placed 18 centimeters so let me draw 2f here so 2f would be placed 24 cm right so the object is between 2f and f and the height of the object is 7.2 centimeters cool no problem they want me to determine now the image distance now i didn't need to draw the diagram you know i just try i just draw the diagram so you would understand what they're really talking about with focal point and height of the object and stuff like that right so the image distance remember we had this formula that showed that one over the image distance plus one over the object distance is one over the focal point so now we have the focal point we have the object distance but now we just want to find the image distance and it's very simple so 1 over v plus 1 over u is 1 over f i fill out my u i have u is 18 i have f is 12 so then i take the 1 over 18 and i bring it to the other side right so i will be left with 1 over v on this side so now i am left with 1 over 12 minus 1 over 18 again i find the lcm and i take away just like standard 5 right so the lcm of 12 and 18 is 36 so 12 and 36 is 3 18 and 36 is 2 so I end up with 3 minus 2, which is 1 over 36. So now I am left with 1 over V is equal to 1 over 36. And all that's left to do is to flip the two of them. So I get V is equal to 36 centimeters. And that is the image distance. The next thing, they want me to find a magnification. And there's lots of different ways I could actually find a magnification. Well, there's only one really in this case, right? So we have the, um, remember we could have used the object height and the image height, but we don't have the image height. We have the, the image distance and the object distance, right? So we have to put the image distance over the object distance. We just calculated the image distance, which was 36 and the object distance is 18. So 36 over 18 is two. So the magnification is two. The height of the image form now, so, as I just said, another way of finding the magnification is the image height over the object height. So, we have the magnification, which is 2, and then we have the object height that they give us, which was 7.2. So, image height over object height, we, the magnification is 2, and we just need to find the image height. So, all that's left to do is to multiply the side by 7.2, so you get 2 multiplied by 7.2 is your image height which is 14.4 centimeters and finally they are asking whether the image formed is real or virtual now in the first question we touched on this right and i actually drew it out here for you if the object is further away from the focal point it will always be real if it's between the focal point and the lens it will be virtual so in this case the image is real and those are, that is uh, ray diagrams and lenses in a nutshell. I just wanted to include Snell's law here just in case it pops up in the exam, right? So this is your typical lab setup where you have your ray of light going through a glass block and it's being refracted, right? So we could see that the angle of incidence here is 30 degrees. And the question asks if the refractive index of the material is 1.3. Calculate the angle of refraction in the material given that the angle of incidence is 30 degrees. So for this, we use the ever popular Snell's law, which states that N1 sine I is equal to N2 sine R. N1 and N2 meaning the refractive indexes of the materials, and sine I is the angle of incidence, sine R is the angle of refraction. So they gave us the angle of incidence, which is 30 degrees, and we are coming from air into the, um, the material. So the, uh, um, the refractive index of air is always one. So N1 will always be 1, right? So 1 sine 30 is equal to 1.3, which is the refractive index of the material, sine R. Remember, we want to find R, right? 
So we just need to make R the subject of the formula here. So I move the 1.3 over to the other side by dividing. So I end up with sine 30 over 1.3. Remember, 1 times anything is itself, so I can leave all the 1 now, is equal to sine R. And then finally, to find R, I need to take the sine inverse of sine 30 over 1.3. So what you could do, you could either put in a calculator sine 30 over 1.3 and find out that, and then sine inverse that answer. Or if you want to do everything one time, you could sine inverse sine 30 over 1.3 without calculating anything, and you should end up with 22.62 degrees. And this is a very foolish one more question here. They ask if the refractive index of the material increased why would the lateral displacement of the ray increase? Well, lateral displacement meaning um, if it didn't have this material here, this is the ray, the original ray of light will simply come here and this is the lateral displacement. Well, if the angle of ins if the refractive index is more, there will be more refraction and therefore the, the um the ray will simply divert more. Okay. Alright. The last thing here is critical angle. So, the critical angle is the angle of incidence, which results in an angle of refraction of 90 degrees always, right? So, that, if you understand what that means, is if you're coming from, you need to come from an optically dense medium to an op optically less dense medium. So, essentially, you need to come from this material to air. Uh, angle of critical angle will not work if you're coming from air to the medium, Okay. That's what this definition is important for. So let's see if we could find the um, the critical angle for this material now. So again, we're using the same Snell's law. N1 sine i is equal to N2 sine r. Except we know what sine r is going to be. Remember, our definition says the angle of refraction is 90 degrees. So sine r is 90. We want to find what the angle of incidence is that would produce a... Uh, um, refraction of 90 degrees okay so remember we are coming from the optically dense medium to the air right so now our n1 is actually 1.3 that is our that is where we're coming from okay so it's 1.3 sine i is equal to 1 sine 90 so all we have to do is find sine i which is very simple we just take the 1.3 and divide it so we end up with sine 90 is sine 90 over 1.3 and to find i, we take the sine inverse of that, and our answer will be 50.28 degrees. Now, if you're doing add maths, you might know that sine 90 is always 1, right? If you could put that in a calculator, and you would see for yourself that that is always 1, right? But that's just a by the way, factor calculator will do everything that you need for you, okay? But 50.28 degrees is the critical angle. Now, any other angle more than this is going to result in total internal reflection and i will show you in the next question what that actually is so this is a fiber optic cable right this is how you get fast internet and stuff so this is the information traveling here the rays of light and you could see that they are actually being reflected along along the cable right and this is because they are actually traveling at an angle of incidence greater than the critical angle so let's find the critical angle here Again, we use Snell's law, right? They, they, they are telling me that the the um, refractive index is 1.03, so that's going to be my N1 as usual. So it's going to be 1.03 sine i, we're trying to find the angle of incidence, is equal to 1 sine 90. Remember, for critical angle, the angle of refraction will always be 90, right? So to find sine i, again, we divide by 1.03, and we take the sine inverse of that result, and you will get 76.14 degrees. So any other angle greater than 76.14 will result in total internal reflection and will start to bounce and go very rapidly through the, um, the fiber optic cable. And that is light and lenses in a nutshell.